In this video, I will give an introduction to air quality in Beijing and Chinese city in general. I will focus on the state and dynamics of air quality in Beijing, but also address some of the ways in which the city tries to improve air quality. Although I focus on Beijing, the topics I address are illustrative of some other cities, such as Shanghai and Guangzhou. Beijing's air is notorious for the smoke and haze that you can often see above the city. Broadly speaking, this is the result of a rapid urbanization and economic growth that is characteristic for Beijing as for many other cities in China. Over the past few years, air pollution became a topic of major attention for scientists, but also for citizens and the Chinese government. In particular, PM2.5 received major attention by the public due to its adverse health effects and visibility impairment. Beijing lies in a region that has been suffering from the most severe PM2.5 pollution in China, which caused serious health problems for the people living there. The public attention to air quality and PM2.5 was fostered by mega events such as the 2008 Olympic Games and the 2014 APEC Summit. During these events, the air quality improved dramatically thanks to a set of strong short-term measures such as the temporary closure of polluting factories and strong limitations on car use. This short-term cleanup of air was popularly called the APEC blue effect. Uncertainties about the severity of air pollution and its effect on public health were fostered by a series of events. A scientific challenge was to develop a unified monitoring network to get accurate understanding of air quality in Chinese cities and to help reducing the prevailing uncertainties. In the year 2000, the Ministry of Environmental Protection of China started to publish a daily air pollution index called the API. This index is daily calculated by integrating a number of pollutants into a value that indicates the general air quality. PM2.5 concentrations, however, were not monitored until 2012 when China released a new ambient air quality standard, officially including PM2.5 as a pollutant. Because of the new standard, many Chinese cities started to monitor hourly concentrations of many pollutants, including PM2.5. Since January 2013, this real-time data has been freely available online. From these measurements, we learned that the most significant pollutant for this air in Beijing is PM2.5, of which the annual average concentration is around 81 microgram per cubic meter in 2015. The problems Beijing has with its air quality depends on many factors, including the climate, weather, geographic locations. But most of the importance is the anthropogenic emissions. In general, two-thirds of air pollution in Beijing originates from within the city. Industry and the city's mobility system are responsible for the largest share of emissions and are significantly responsible for the high PM2.5 concentrations. This is because of the vast and ever-increasing amount of cars in the city and due to coal-burning industries that are located close by the city. Citizens suffer from these high concentrations and the PM2.5-related premature mortality in Beijing is estimated to be 26,000 people annually. The air quality in Beijing is not constant. The outbreak of a haze episode, for example, has strong seasonal characteristics that are related to Beijing's monsoon climate. Usually, wintertime PM2.5 is about 40% higher than summertime PM2.5. Besides variation in temperature and precipitation, these higher values are also caused by heating from coal combustion. As you see, Air quality is a major issue for Chinese cities such as Beijing. One of the efforts to improve the situation is the Red Alert, a fierce emergency response first issued in December 2015 that requires good to close, demanded construction work to stop, and put strong restrictions on the number of cars on the road. Events like Olympic Games and the APEC Summit suggest that Beijing's air quality can improve drastically in short term. But to achieve clean air in the long term remains an ambitious goal. 
The recent action plan on air quality, released by the Chinese government, set a number of long-term targets, and besides institutional change and restriction on industries, citizens have a major role in this action plan by way of their mobility practices. As you see, air quality in Chinese city is a topic that requires major attention from the government, scientists, and citizens alike. A sustainability a transition on this topic is especially challenging in light of the high rate of urban economic growth in many cities in China.